Good morning, my beautiful diamonds. Today is October 10th. On October 10th, one of the most awesome things happened to me. I gave birth to a son. He has not only proven to be an amazing human being, but he has always proven to be a blessing to me. Yes, and I am so truly grateful for having such an outstanding son. And now today, on October 10th, <clears throat> God's way is always better. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 says, Lord, you keep those people safe who continue to trust in you. You give them peace in their minds because they believe in you. And from the easy read version, it says, God, you give true peace to people who depend on you and to those who trust in you. We may not always get things our way in life, but we can trust that God's way is always going to prove to be better. God is a good God. And he said that he has good things planned for his children. At Jeremiah Chapter 29, verse 11, I, the Lord, tell you this. I have decided that I what I will do for you. I have plans to help you to do well, to do very well. I do not want to hurt you. I want to give you hope for a good life in the future. We do not have to be afraid of harm because God is not an angry judge. He is not mean. He is good. We can rejoice with thanksgiving, knowing that everything good in life comes from God. He wants us to trust him. And when we take a step of faith to do so, we will see the goodness of God manifest in our lives. The more we surrender, the better our life will become. And that's a guarantee. God can do all things except for one thing, and that is to tell a lie. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, when I find myself disappointed by my circumstances, help me to remember that you are in control. I thank you in advance that your plan for my life is so much better than my own plan. I trust you and your direction for my life. We say these things, Heavenly Father Yahweh, Jehovah, through your Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Amen. So there you have it, my beautiful sparkling diamonds and my Teletubbies. God's way is always going to prove to be the best way. When we look at our own plans, they may seem logical to us and appealing, but let's keep it real and let's be honest. Our understanding is very limited. We can only see a fraction of the bigger picture. God, on the other hand, his son, Jesus Christ, that's how he works through his son, Jesus. On the other hand, they see everything. They know our past, our present, and our future. So his wisdom is always going to surpass our own and it's going to guide us towards paths or towards things that we may not have even considered. So when we are faced with decisions or certain challenges that come our way, it's always so important for us to pause for a minute take time to reflect and to ask ourselves, am I leaning on my own understanding or am I going to follow the way God and Christ is guiding me? Because trusting in their ways, it, it, it requires faith and it requires patience, but you could best, you could bet the farm, your last dollar that is going to be always worth it. And now it's time to share your beautiful power thoughts for this morning. Keep in mind, when you ask God for certain things, the answer is not always going to be yes. Let me share this with you. I asked God to take my habit away. God said no. It is not for me to take away, but for you to give it up. I asked God to grant me patience. God said no. Patience is a byproduct of tribulations. It isn't granted, it is earned. I ask God to give me happiness. God said no. I give you blessings, happiness is up to you. I ask God to spare me pain.
God said no. Suffering draws you apart from worldly cares and brings you closer to me. I asked God to make my spirit grow. God said no. You must grow on your own. But I will prune you to make you fruitful. I asked for all things that I might enjoy in life. God said no. I will give you life so that you may enjoy all things. Then I asked God to help me love others as much as he loves me. God said, finally, you get the idea. Wasn't that beautiful? All the other things that you asked God for, God said no to it because there was a reason behind it. And then when you finally asked God, help me to know how to love others. God said, finally, you get it. Because that's the greatest command after the first command that we are to love God and love God with our whole heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. That's the first greatest command. And the second greatest command is for us to what? To love each other, to love one another. And God said, finally, you're asking me for the right thing. That's selfless. Beautiful. I just had to share that with you this morning. So it's so important for us to know that when we ask God for things, we are usually seeking what we believe will make us happy and bring us fulfillment. But we have to keep in mind, always keep in mind and remember that God sees the bigger picture, one that we may not yet comprehend. And his refusal to answer a prayer is not a rejection. It's a divine safeguard. It's an opportunity for our growth, reflection, and ultimately a chance to align ourselves with his greater plan. Think about it this way. No is just a redirection. It's as if God is saying, I have something better in store for you. When we're too focused on our own desires, <clears throat> we might overlook the blessings that are already on their way. Sometimes we may think we we, 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 we want what we want could lead us down the path that we aren't meant to go down. God sees that that path down there is going to create problems for you. There might be a lot of challenges and a lot of heartbreak. And that's what our heavenly father is trying to protect us from. So those moments of disappointment, they can serve as things that are necessary for our character. They teach us patience, resilience, and trusting in God's timing. Just because we don't receive what we want, it doesn't mean we are unloved or unworthy. In fact, it's often in those very moments of denial that our faith is strengthened. So the next time you find yourself struggling with unanswered prayers or what you perceive as rejections, just take a moment to reflect and trust that Jehovah God and his son, Jesus Christ, they have your best interests at heart. His no could very well be paving the way for something far greater, far greater than you can even imagine. You didn't even take time to think that big in terms of what God and Jesus Christ has in store for you. So just take time to embrace your journey and enjoy the journey and remain open to the countless possibilities that lie ahead for you. And now it's time for your Bible trivia questions, my beautiful diamonds. To what person did Paul write two letters? Okay, I can't, I can't tell you that one. For to us, a wait, wait, I, I, I dropped my cards yesterday, so I'm going to have to come up with something new for you. Okay. Who was Ruth's son? Ruth chapter four, verse 13 and 17. Where did the angel find Gideon Thresh? No, that's not important. I don't care about that. I, I, I'm sorry, guys. Okay, the first question, let's start. Who was David's good friend who loved him? First Samuel 20, 17. Which brother of Jesus wrote a book of the Bible? Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. James chapter 1, verse 1. Jude chapter 1. Where were the two disciples going when Jesus joined them on the road? Luke chapter 24, 13 through 15. So there you have it, my diamonds. Jehovah loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. And I love you very much. Go out there and shine and sparkle like the diamonds that Jesus created you to be. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle.